Uh, Chairman Powell, thanks so much for being here. Uh, I have a question that's slightly far afield, but uh, how often do you get to talk to the Federal Reserve Chairman? So I might as well ask it. So, so to give some context here, my family comes from Appalachia. Uh, particularly my grandparents grew up in southeastern Kentucky coal country and then moved to southern Ohio, where I now have the honor of representing uh, all of Ohio. And, you know, one of the things that you hear a lot when you study the, the, the regional history of Appalachia is it's often described as possessing a resource curse, right? So there's a lot of coal in central Appalachia uh, that enables a certain amount of consumption. Obviously, consumption is good. People need food and medicine and other things. Uh, but there's also a good, a pretty good argument that for a host of reasons, it causes malinvestment in, in the region. And consequently, you have lower productivity growth, lower innovation in an economy that's much less diversified and much less dynamic. Um, I'm wondering, when I, when I hear about the history, when I think about and read about the history of Appalachia and the resource curse, uh, I'm, I'm struck by, some of the, by, by the idea that you could make a similar argument about the reserve currency status of the United States dollar. Uh, Americans have enjoyed one of the greatest privileges of the international economy for the last nearly eight decades, a strong dollar that acts, of course, as the world's reserve currency. You know that better than I do. Now, this has obviously been great for American purchasing power. We, en we enjoy cheaper imports. Uh, Americans, when they travel abroad, benefit from lower, uh, lower costs. Uh, but it does come at a cost to American producers. I think in some ways you can argue that the reserve currency status is a massive subsidy to American consumers, but a massive tax on American producers. Um, now, I know the strong dollar is sort of a sacred cow of the Washington consensus, but when I survey the American economy and I, I see our mass consumption of mostly useless imports on the one hand and our hollowed out industrial base on the other hand, I wonder if the reserve currency status also has some downsides and not just some upsides as well. And let, let me just put a final point on this, and I'd love to get your your, your thoughts on that, Chairman Powell. Uh, we're, of course, now the main supporter of a massive land war in Europe between the Russians and the Ukrainians. Uh, I read recently, and I, I'm not going to you know comment on, on how perfect or precise these estimates are, but I read recently that the United States is trying to ramp up production from 14,000 artillery shells to 20,000 artillery shells. That's per month, while the Russians are firing 20,000 artillery shells in Ukraine per day. And when I look at the American economy, we have a lot of financial engineers and a lot of diversity consultants. We don't have a lot of people making things. And I worry that the reserve currency status and the, the lack of control we have over our currency is perhaps driving that. I'm, I'd love to get your, your feedback on that. What are the upsides and downsides of the reserve currency? That's a, that's a big question to try to, <laughs> to try answer. You have two minutes, today. Chairman Powell, so <laughs> plenty of time. I, might, I can't even get started on that. So we are, we are the world's reserve currency, of course, and that's because of our democratic institutions. It's because of uh, uh, our, our control over inflation over many, many, many years. The public, tr the world trusts uh, the rule of law in the United States, and those are the things. So once you're the world's reserve, reserve currency, it's used in all over the world in transactions, and it's the place where people want to be in times of stress is in dollar-denominated sure. assets. Now, um, is it so? Of course, we benefit by being able to pay for our goods all over the world, pay for everything anywhere in the world, mostly with dollars. That's that's an advantage. Um, you know, there 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 are some economic theory around that that it also has uh, burdens of various kind, but I, I I can't call it all back to mind. But um, you know, oh, the other thing is, you know, it's a very stable equilibrium, but it's not a perfect one. It's it, it's not a permanent one, rather. So. There, there isn't any obvious uh, candidate to replace the United States right now where you can have free flow of capital in and out of the country, where you can really trust the rule of law and democratic institutions and, and keeping, uh, you know, keeping price stability, which you can here. Do you think it gives us less control over our own cur currency, the fact that it's become the world's reserve currency? You, uh, control over our currency. Um, I'm not sure. So essentially, what we try to control is price stability. And no, it doesn't. It doesn't make it harder for us to uh, keep inflation under control. The United States has a smaller external sector than most large economies, where it's only about 15 percent. So mainly, what affects uh, inflation in the United States is is domestic supply and demand. Do you think mainly. it makes it harder for us to affect con or and to fight back against currency manipulation to control the export and import flows in a way that stabilizes our own manufacturing sector? Well, I mean, what's, what's important there is really the level of the dollar. 
And you know, when the dollar is stronger, obviously our pri our, our our wares are more expensive abroad and that kind of thing. But we don't we don't have an opinion on we that's the, no. matters of uh, the level of the dollar really matters for the Treasury Department and the, and the elected government, not for the Fed. Thank you, Chairman Bell. Thank you, Thanks, Senator Vance. Uh,